Are you after a mini PC that looks cleaner than your kitchen? Jason! Jason! Or finally, your wait is over. Welcome to Team Pandora. Subscribble. So this arrived, courtesy of GMK Tech. This mini PC was sent to us in purpose of video review. A GMK Tech Notebox M3. Let's get this open. Wow, that looks nice. I would say it reminds me of white chocolate, but it looks like you could do some food prep on this. So the top is glossy white, and the side seems to be aluminium. It's quite light. And we can fit this Intel i5 mini PC into a larger pocket. Let's see what else is in here. So we've got this piece of card here, and inside is the manual. As I'm in the Japan region, this is in Japanese, English, and Chinese. Comes with a power cord. We'll need this for our power adapter. And a HDMI cable, which is roughly around one and a half meters long. Here's a switching power brick, and it outputs at 20 volts, 5 amps, at 100 watts. We're also given a vase mount, so we can attach it to the back of a monitor, or under a desk, or something like that. And here's a business card. I think they might have got this messed up with Top Gear, because I think that's a stick. My stick is much larger. Let's take his top off. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that. So this might be the most beautiful mini PC we've had our hands on. Let's take a look around. On the front we have two USB 3.2 ports and a power switch. It's a little too small for our liking, but they chose the best color. On the side we have air intake vents. And turning around to the back we have multiple ports as well as the exhaust vents on the top. On the left we've got the DC in, 3.5mm audio jack, HDMI 2.0, good for 4K up to 60Hz, 2.5GB Ethernet LAN, on the top a USB 2, and on the bottom a USB 3.2, another HDMI port, and a USB Type-C, which can also be used as a display port. On the left side, more air intakes, and underneath we have a label, and these two little screw holes for the VESA mount. To use this, we'll need to put in two screws to the back of the monitor, and unscrew two of the rubber feet from the bottom of the PC. If we try and install the mount centered, only two of the screws will fit, which leaves us with a fairly sketchy case. We managed to get around this by installing it slightly off center. So now we can use three screws, it won't fall apart, and it can safely attach to the back of the monitor. So how large is the GMK Tech M3? Well, here's a ruler and a tape measure. The M3 is around this big, and for our UK audience, it's just under four Roybosch teabags big. Time for a cuppa. <sighs> this mini PC with eight cores has a lot under its hood. While it doesn't have the fastest components, it certainly should be able to pack a punch when it comes to productivity. But like many other Intel mini PCs, the weakest link is usually the GPU. To control this mini PC, we'll use a wireless keyboard and mouse. And on first boot, we'll be welcome to a Windows 11 setting screen. We just need to let our mini PC know which language to use and which region we're from. Take around 5 minutes of your time, and soon enough we'll be in Windows. From here connect to your internet via LAN or Wi-Fi, and then Windows will be automatically activated. Just like that. And you're free to update Windows, or do whatever you want. If you want some new software, we do recommend going to ninite.com, where you just click what we want. All of this is free, and we can get things like antivirus, graphic tools, and office. Usual tasks like internet shopping on this mini PC are no problem. We get a strong Wi-Fi signal and might purchase a chicken cushion. That looks sublime. Do you come with a car? And AliExpress have their own collection. Check these out. Oh yeah. It has no issues with 4K videos on YouTube, and this monkey looks fantastic. And you'll be okay with Netflix too. If you need to use Office for work or to draw Lego pictures, this mini PC has you covered. Ta-da! And the same would go for graphics design like Adobe Photoshop or Krita. And with the CPU power of this thing, it simply shreds through Apple Studio. The MVME drive included is pretty nippy, but it's not the fastest by a long shot. 
User mark is blunt as usual, showing us that the CPU in this is pretty damn good, but due to this low internal GPU, it will perform pretty bad if you want to game on it. 3D mark now, we get around 80% performance of the i7-12650H, but CPU performance, especially in single core, shows that this mini PC is certainly not slow in the slightest. Here's some numbers from Cinebench 23. We see that this mini PC can excel in single core performance. And here's Blender. We can easily connect to our Bluetooth controller, so let's go test out some games. First up, Streets of Rage 4. At the top left we have the FPS, and as expected, 2D games on this machine work without issue. Rocket League with the best graphic settings at 1080p is playable while getting around 50 to 55 FPS. But if we set our graphic settings to performance, we can get full speed. And it's Fortnite 1080p medium settings. Playable, but not ideal. Dota 2 at 1080p, best setting, we're getting around 38 FPS. Click it down to 720p, 60. By my decree. Now a bit of CSGO, I mean CS2. At 720p, it runs like this. Very jerky. And even if we change graphic settings to low, we still get the jerky performance, and it looks terrible. The BIOS settings are fairly comprehensive. It has the options we need, and many more. It's fairly easy to change the power limit, where we have options for 28, 35, and 45 watts. But as this raises the thermals for little to no performance boost, we stayed on 35 watts. If you need secure boot for Valorant, switch it here, or you could run a Linux distro like Batacera. Let's check emulation. First up, Model 3. Nintendo GameCube. Nintendo Wii Wii U Xbox. PlayStation 2. Now we can upscale the graphics to 1080p. At idle, fan noise is pretty much non-existent, and it pulls around 11 watts from the wall. When pushing, however, we found it was a good idea to lower the fan start temps in the BIOS. If not, throttling would kick in. Here's how things look with grid auto support, and this is how it sounds. It's pulling around 52 watts from the wall, and at full fan speed, it sounds like this. To open this, we need to remove four screws, and the bottom comes right off. There's enough space here for a two and a half inch drive, but there's no connector. We have a nice heatsink on the NVMe. This does keep the thermals low. And if we remove these rubber bands, we're greasy with Alexar NM620. It's slightly faster than the 610, 
I would have liked to see a Gen 4 stick included. Here's a DDR4 memory, and it's by... Whoop is it? So this is probably where they cut corners. There's two sticks of memory, so they'll be running in dual channel. And underneath, there is a whole lot of nothing. There's this in the center that supports SSD. And underneath the NVMe, we have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip. This one uses the RTL 8852BE. Well, let's see if my SSD fits. It doesn't. Well, the other half of the plan was to use an eGPU. We're going to use my old NVIDIA 1060. And we'll pop this into the NVMe slot. Then give it a screw. Then with the NVMe stick in an external case, we'll see if it boots. It doesn't. Then we forced our NVMe into the center SSD slot. We used electrical tape so it wouldn't short. And believe it or not, we got this thing running. And CS2 is silky smooth. But is it a silky smooth for seven of nine in a cat suit? I think not. And Alexa runs at the same speed as the regular larger NVMe slot. So what do we think about this mini PC? Well, outside of its stunning looks, it has a decent CPU on board. We have another slot that can be used for storage as well as an eGPU. And GMK Tech always priced the units competitively in the market. Unfortunately, the onboard GPU is seriously lacking. We would have liked to have a larger second storage slot. And when the fan goes at full speed, it can be a little noisy. Saying that, it's usually fairly quiet. This beautiful mini PC is a great option for 2D graphics, audio, and emulation. And if you want to push it, eGPU. It is a decent PC, just don't expect it to play any 3D games using the onboard graphics. As I play a bit of Black Tiger, here's a big thank you to all of those on our Patreon. Here at Team Pandory, we make video reviews like this, guides and tutorials, and help fix them cheap arcade boxes, as well as the A500 Mini. If you want to help support our work, please jump on, or a simple like and subscribe would go a long way. Anyway, this has been Im Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra! Sorry. A bit too clean down there.